In this aquatic showdown, we've got a true David and Goliath situation. We're going to compare the humble clown tang. Well, that's not right. We're going to compare the humble convict tang with the mighty clown tang to find out which is the better surgeon fish for your reef aquarium. In doing so, we're going to use the four criteria. We're going to use the fish's overall appearance and beauty, the fish's personality and demeanor in the reef aquarium. We're going to put the fish to work and find out what utility values they offer to us as reef aquarists. And lastly, we're going to compare the fish's availability and costs. And then we'll decide which is the better surgeon fish choice for your aquarium. Now they say that beauty lies in the eye of the beholder, but I don't think there can be many of you that would disagree that the clown tang is an absolutely stunning fish. This fish has got alternating light blue and dark blue horizontal stripes, alternated with bright yellow stripes, paired or contrasted to a stunning clear white belly. Not only that, it's a large surgeon fish that only gets better with age. It tops out at about 30 centimetres or 12 inches, and as it matures and those colours uh, intensify, it also develops a strongly lunate shaped tail with just a hint, just a hint of streamers at the ends. And this makes for overall, it's an absolutely stunning fish. For those of you with less flamboyant tastes, the convict tang offers us, well, a more subdued palette. It has six vertical black stripes, which overlay a cream background. I have found as the fish matures with age, that cream can develop tones of, a, of an olive green. So the convict tang is actually a much smaller surgeon fish. In fact, it's one of the smallest Acanthurus surgeon fishes that I'm familiar with. Although the books will tell you that it's, uh, it gets to a, be an eight inch or a 20 centimetre long fish, I find them to be much more common around the 10 to 15 centimetre size. In fact, the fish in my tank behind me here, I've had four going on about three years now, and they've reached to be about 12 centimetres long. So they're a much smaller surgeon fish compared to our clown tang. I think the true beauty of the convict tang for us aquarists, however, lies in the ability of us to keep it in small groups. And let's face it, a group of fish wearing striped pyjamas is probably a bit more appealing than one fish wearing striped pajamas. And that brings us to... And this is where the comparison gets a little bit interesting. Now, surgeon fishers in general will do three things in life. They'll eat algae, they'll defend their algae, and they'll have babies to then eat more algae. They'll defend their algae patches on the reef against any other food competitors or herbivorous fish, such as certainly other surgeon fishes and tangs, but also fish like rabbit fishes and fox faces. They're also equipped with a sharp scalpel-like blade on the caudal peduncle, each side of the tail. Quite commonly, we'll use that in a slapping motion against other fishes to hurry them along. Now, some are worse than others, and in my experience, the convict tang, it's one of the best. I've never found my group of convict tangs to bother any other reef aquarium fish in my tanks with one exception. Now I did say they can be kept in groups, which they certainly can, but as small juveniles, I have found that they'll squabble. So the best experience I've had with keeping convict tangs in groups is when you've actually obtained or acquired a small group of larger convict tangs. Now this goes completely against everything that we've learned when introducing fish to each other, especially when they're the same or like species. We wanna start with small species or small individuals. But in this case, the juvenile convict tangs are not only um, a little bit more delicate, they're also much more inclined to squabble with each other compared to more adult or sub-adult convict tangs. Of course, buy them all at the same time and introduce them all at the same time to the aquarium. And then you'll have the best success in keeping them as a group. From David, we go to Goliath. The clown tang, not only is it a beauty, but it's an absolute beast. Uh, the best words I've got to describe the clown tang in my aquarium is, well, the words demonic bully come to mind. I caught my clown tang as a, as a tiny little three centimeter juvenile in a rock pool just up the coast from Coffs Harbour under my aquarium collection permit. And from the minute that I popped it into this tank, it went about asserting itself and its presence 
to all the other fish in the tank, including fish that were 10 times its size. And it has not stopped doing that to this very day. My clown tank now sits around about 10 to 12 centimetres long, and it certainly is, it's not the boss of the tank, because it won't have a crack at my wedge-tailed triggerfish or my wrasse at all, but it's certainly the boss of all herbivorous fish in that tank. There doesn't appear to be any sort of pattern into in who it, who it targets or bullies for that day. One day I'll come out and it's harassing one particular convict tank. The next day I'll come out and it's targeting the rabbit fish and leaving everybody else alone. And then just for the sake of it, that afternoon, it'll turn its attention to the fox face. Now, if you read the books, the clown tang is reported to be at the top of the Akinthurid aggression hierarchy, along with the Sohal tang. Now, although the clown tang's actions don't seem to be to want to permanently injure the other fish, although I can't be sure, it certainly has got the intent of bullying and harassing its tank mates. Now this is where the convict tang absolutely excels and I'm afraid the clown tang falls short. The convict tang is an absolute algae eating machine. All day and every day, it's picking and pecking at the rocks and the surfaces, grazing on the micro algaes, the hair algaes and turf algaes. Because of their mild demeanor, you can keep not only a group of convict tangs, but you can also team them up with other herbivorous fish as part of your cleanup crew. The genus Tinochetus comes immediately to mind. Now that's a, a genus of surgeon fishes which are commonly called the bristletooth tangs. And that includes the coal tang, the, the white-tailed tang, the tamini tang, and the two-spot tang. They have a much more um, of, a, of a fine bristle-style tooth which, which allows them to actually kiss away at the surface of the rocks. Now on the other hand, the clown tang it is a herbivorous fish. It does eat algae. There's no doubt about that. That's its natural diet. But there's one big drawback to it being considered a utility fish in the aquarium. And I'm afraid it comes back to personality again. It always comes back to personality, doesn't it? It's just way too busy bossing other fish around to be bothered spending much time eating algae. I'm afraid there's actually not much more to say here. There's, there's not much time to eat algae when you're when you're being that much of a jerk. So both the clown tang and the convict tang are both readily available fish and I don't think you'll have any trouble finding them in your local aquarium store. They're both also fairly affordable and you should be able to pick up either of them for prices somewhere between $60 and $100. Now one thing to keep in mind is the size of the tang or certain fish that you intend to purchase. Remember what I was saying about those convict tanks? How when they're juveniles, they squabble and carry on? So certainly look out for ones that actually are around about that 10 centimeter mark. Purchase all the fish at the same time and introduce them all at the same time. And you'll have a much more harmonious convict group if that's what you intend. Now the clown tang is available not only as an Australian collected fish, but also it's quite commonly on the import lists from collection overseas and in the, in the Indo-Pacific. I would recommend to you to absolutely push to buy an Australian collected fish. The imported clown tangs I've seen are usually on the much smaller size and they're usually quite skinny. Now it's time for the verdict. So the mighty clown tang is, let's face it, it's an absolute gorgeous fish. It's an absolute glamour. It's a real beauty in the reef aquarium. But a bit like my ex-girlfriend, beauty can be a limitation. And there is times when personality comes up trumps. And this, I'm afraid, is one of those circumstances. In saying that, I love my clown tang. And I'm certainly not going to rehome my clown tang. But I think it's important to be aware of the aquarium size and style that you're aiming for and choose tank mates appropriately. I think the best tank size for a clown tang would be an absolute minimum of an eight foot tank. And my clown tang and the rest of these inhabitants will shortly be going into a 4,000 litre, 12 foot long aquarium build. I also think that it would make for a best display if it's the only herbivorous fish in the aquarium. So that means just the clown tang, 
no other surgeon fishes, and no other rabbit fishes. I think then it would truly shine in that aquarium. But for the vast majority of aquarists, the humble convict tang, I feel, is the much better choice. It's an algae eating machine that can be kept in groups. It's an algae eating machine that won't bother other algae eating fishes, can therefore provide you not only with the fantastic utility value of that algae control, but also offer you a much more harmonious aquarium experience. So I think the convict tang truly deserves to be the winner of this aquatic showdown. And let's face it, it is a handsome fish. So what do you guys think? Have you guys kept a convict tang? Have you guys kept a group of convict tangs? Have you guys experienced the wrath of a clown tang? Let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share while you're down there. Keep an eye out for our next aquatic showdown where we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're staying, we're staying underwater and we're gonna jump classes into the realms of the reptilia where we find out if the Eastern long neck turtle or the Macquarie short neck turtle is the best pet Australian turtle for you.